After the successful D-Day landings and the battle for Normandy in the summer of 1944, the Allied armies pursued the retreating Germans across France to the borders of Germany itself. The British and Canadian forces struck northeast into Belgium and parts of the Netherlands. Operation Market Garden, a joint Anglo-American attempt to end the war in 1944 by snatching a series of bridges across the Rhine River into the Ruhr industrial zone of Germany, failed at the town of Arnhem, the British losing the best part of an airborne division in the attempt. Following Market Garden, the Allies switched focus and captured the vital supply port of Antwerp in Belgium, while the Canadians took the Scheldt estuary. A series of battles eventually led to the Western Netherlands being isolated. During Market Garden, the Allies had encouraged the Dutch railway workers to strike to aid the Allied attack. In retaliation, the German authorities placed an embargo on all food transports to the Western Netherlands until November 1944, when it was partially lifted. But the winter of 1944-45 was especially harsh. Dutch canals froze, meaning that food supplies could not be brought into the region. The Dutch would call this time the Hunger Winter, and they starved as the barges couldn't move. German destruction of transport infrastructure to hinder the Allied advance worsened the problem, and heavy fighting in the southeast and southwest of the country prevented food movements. Starvation would affect some three million people. Food rations dropped steadily throughout the winter and into spring 1945. Gas and electricity was also shut off, as there was insufficient coal for power, exacerbating the suffering in the freezing conditions. People burned their furniture in an attempt to keep warm. The Dutch began dying of malnutrition and related diseases in December 1944. The suffering would peak in March 1945. The situation was so bad that the Dutch government in exile in London appealed to General Eisenhower to intervene, but this was difficult. The Western Netherlands was still under German occupation. Ruling the region was Reichskommissar Arthur Zeiss Inquart, an Austrian who had instituted a reign of terror since 1940. Under his rule, the Nazi security forces had forced 530,000 Dutch civilians to labour for the Germans. As well as organising the round-up and deportation of 140,000 Dutch Jews to the concentration camps, any military ceasefire between Allied forces and the German army in the Netherlands would also have to include Zeiss Inquart as the overall Nazi chieftain for the region. Exiled Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, the son-in-law of Queen Wilhelmina, obtained Prime Minister Winston Churchill's permission and that of President Franklin D. Roosevelt to conduct a relief operation. Authorization was given by the U.S. Chief of Staff, General George C. Marshall, on the 23rd of April, 1945. General Eisenhower, as Supreme Allied Commander, was asked to arrange a truce with Zeiss Inquart. On the 24th of April, London announced on the radio that food drops would commence. Berlin immediately ridiculed the plan on its own radio, but Zeisingquart received a message from Eisenhower via the Dutch resistance. A special team of Allied agents was sent to negotiate with German military commander Colonel General Johannes Blaskowitz, commanding Army Group H. Blaskowitz agreed to an airdrop an American and British aircraft would be permitted to drop food and medicine to the Dutch civilian population. Luftwaffe fighters and flak batteries would not fire on these aircraft as long as they agreed to fly within set air corridors and use particular drop zones. On the 26th of April, General Blaskowitz and Zeiss Inquart agreed for the airdropping sites for emergency food aid. While this was still going on, heavy fighting between Allied and German forces continued in other parts of the Netherlands. On the 28th of April, Allied and German envoys met at Achterfeld near Amersfoort to discuss the food drops, working out the fine details for an operation codenamed Manor. The first trial drop was then made. On the 29th of April 1945, two RAF Avro Lancasters, led by a Canadian pilot in Bad Penny, flew over German positions at only 50 feet. 
no fire was opened upon them. The Lancasters dumped their precious cargoes, the food and medicines, turned and flew back to base. On the 30th of April, the day Hitler killed himself in his Berlin bunker, Zeiss Inquart formally agreed to the operation, codenamed Manor. Initially, only British Commonwealth aircraft were involved. De Havilland Mosquito pathfinders were used to mark targets in Germany ahead of massive air attacks by the bombers. But instead, they would now mark the dropping zones in the Netherlands, to be followed in by Lancasters from numbers 1, 3 and 8 groups. In total, RAF planes flew 3,301 sorties, dropping their loads from 400 to 500 feet. No parachutes were used, the food parcels simply scattered across the drop zones to be collected by civilians. RAF Bomber Command managed to deliver 6,680 tonnes of food and medicine in this manner. It was a start, but much more was needed. The United States Army Air Force's part of the operation was codenamed Chowhound, and B-17 Flying Fortresses started airdropping food from the 1st of May. The U.S. operation delivered a further 4,000 tons of supplies. German defences were not entirely silent. On occasion, anti-aircraft fire was encountered and also ground fire from German soldiers using machine guns and rifles. Several aircraft returned with bullet holes. Due to the very low altitude nature of the missions, Allied aircrew could actually see German flak guns tracking them as they passed overhead. The dangers very real and ever present. Over the desolate, flooded fields of Holland, once before the Germans touched them, among the most fertile in Europe, over the broken bridges, the broken towns, across a land ravaged by the German retreat, fly the bombers. Pilot flares mark the target areas and the Mercy cargo descends. In three days, over 800 tons of food for a stricken people. Both the Allies and the Germans agreed that the air operations alone would be insufficient to feed the starving Dutch. Therefore, an agreement was reached to allow British and Canadian trucks to enter German-held territory and deliver supplies. Beginning on the 2nd of May 1945, 200 heavily laden trucks drove from an Allied supply depot at Wageringen to Rhenen, passing through German lines. This was done under the watchful eyes of the German Feldgendarmerie, the military police, who then escorted the trucks to Rhenen. At Rhenen, the British and Canadian drivers handed the trucks over to Dutch drivers, who then drove them deep into the Netherlands to unload before returning them to Rhenen. Under the operation, codenamed Faust, the Allies planned to deliver a thousand tons per day to the Dutch. At the same time, the number of dropping sites for Operation Manor were increased to 11, while soon afterwards the first discussions occurred regarding a German surrender in the Netherlands. Incredibly, during all this activity, only three Allied aircraft were lost, two in a collision and one because of engine fire. On the 7th of May 1945, a B-17 Flying Fortress returning to England from a Chowhound food drop crashed in the North Sea. Eleven crew died. Overall, Manor and Chowhound were great successes. 5,356 flights were made and 10,913 tons of food and medicine were dropped. Over 18,000 Dutch died of malnutrition or illnesses exacerbated by food shortages between September 1944 and May 1945. But the Mercy missions flown under operations Manor and Chowhound and the ground operation Faust managed to alleviate the crisis and saved a lot of lives. Arthur Zeiss Inquart was captured by British soldiers on the 7th of May 1945 in Hamburg, Germany. He was executed by hanging in October 1946. Colonel General Johannes Blaskowitz died under mysterious circumstances in February 1948 during his trial for war crimes, possibly by suicide. He was posthumously acquitted on all counts. 
Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.